that seems reckless to just take the hit to the body just to not worry about bleed tokens. Oh, that's so reckless. Should I be so bold and reckless? <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going to be so bold and reckless. All right, welcome back. This is the fourth episode, which is also the third Lantern Year in the Kingdom Death campaign. We will be hunting the Flower Knight uh, this time. So that means that last year in the settlement phase, I should have added the Crone's Tail, but I hadn't decided whether or not I wanted to hunt this yet. Now I have decided, so we'll just say that the Crone's Tail was added to the end of last year's settlement, but last year's settlement was already very long. So I'm just going to try to move this quickly and do it right now. So last settlement should have included Crone's Tail. So when you do Crone's Tail, you just tell a story about the Flower Knight, then you can add the Flower Knight to your quarries. The main point is you need to nominate a survivor. Uh, that survivor graphs like this flower that comes out of uh, this dying survivor. And it becomes part of their gear grid, which is the sleeping virus flower. Now, they also gain the flower addiction disorder, which is this. So, uh, you may only depart to fight the flower knight, but once you do, flower addiction is cured. So, they'll gain the flower addiction disorder, and we are going to give that to uh, Caressa. So, Caressa, she was the survivor we made last settlement at the end of the year. She was the one who gained the plus one permanent luck. So she's never gone out before, so this will be her first hunt. So we'll be taking Caressa. She'll be the one who gains the um, the flowers, flower addiction, and she's also going to gain the sleeping virus. So she'll be part of the hunt this year. So Caressa is going to go out with this is the gear grid for Caressa. She'll have the cloth for her waist. She'll have monster grease for plus one evasion. She's going to have that sleeping virus flower, which is going to give her plus one luck, but it's also cursed. Um, so it means if you die with that in there, with with her, with it on her, and then you do an event that's in the Flower Knight's book, but that's going to give her another plus one luck. So she's going to have one permanent luck and then plus one luck from the gear. So she's going to be critting on eights nines and tens. So uh, we're also going to give her the bone axe. So the bone axe is savage. So if you do critically wound, you do an additional wound. So the goal here is she's just going to run in. She's got plus two luck. She's going to just try to crit as much as she possibly can and do as many wounds as she possibly can with the bone axe. So that is Caressa. That's what she will be going out with. Oh, and then she's got the flower disorder, which is instantly cured because we're hunting it. So we're departing right now. So she's instantly cured of flower addiction. So flower addiction goes back into the disorder. Um, I'm just, I never wrote it down. So that is Caressa. Now, <laughs> we've been not lucky at all, or at least the male uh, gender has not been lucky in our settlement. Um, every male that has gone out has got some sort of addiction or disability or something or they've died. Everything that's happened um, has just been terrible for the male gender. So we have to take another male out. We have to make a new survivor. We can't take Miles. Miles is afraid of the dark. He can never go ever again. Uh, Ollie died last time. Uh, Wit has a broken jaw and permanent minus one accuracy, so he can never eat anything, and he, I think he also has destroyed genitals. Uh, I think that was also him, or maybe that was Clayton, but either way, Clayton also cannot go out. We can't take Clayton. Uh, no, wait. Wit has a contracture, which gave him minus one accuracy, and he's also got a shad jar, so he can't eat anything. Um, Clayton is the one who was tanking for us last year. 
he can he's got destroyed genitals and he can never go out ever again um or he can never be selected for intimacy but he can basically not be our tank because he's got um he can never wear stinky gear so he can't wear monster grease um so he's no good to me <laughs> the only person right now who i don't want to be wearing monster grease would be the tank uh, everyone else really needs the evasion because they have no gear so uh he taking him out again doesn't help us in the slightest so we're not going to want to level him, we're not going to want to level him up because eventually once I do, everyone else, but everyone, the tank's going to be wearing that monster greens all the time to get as much evasion out of it as he can. So he can't wear stinky gear, so we're not taking Clayton out, so we've made a new person. That person is Wave. Wave will be going out. This is Wave's gear grid. He's going to be wearing the Stone Noses. He's got the full Rawhide set this year. So, um, he's going to be using that Bone Dagger again. He's got the plus one evasion from the Rawhide Vest, plus one evasion from Monster Grease, so he's got plus two evasion. Um, he's departing, so when he departs he gains plus one survival. Our departing survivors now gain plus one survival from Hovel, so he's got two. He's got three from being named, but also the Stone Noses would have given him four. So we've got one survival we can spend if we have to while we're hunting. And then if that comes up, Something bad happens, we can spend a survival if we can for the hunt event. So that's great. And then Stonos is also giving him sanity. He's got, like I said, the full rawhide armor. So that is Wave. The rawhide armor gives him plus one to all locations. And whenever he spends survival, he can roll a d10. Or let me rephrase that. Whenever he spends survival on a survival action. So you need to be spending survival. So you can't spend a token and re-roll it to gain the token back. Like, some tokens you can spend as survival. You can't do that. You can't re-roll it to gain the token. You, can, you have to spend just survival, then you can re-roll it, and on a 6+, plus, you get back the survival. So that is Wave. And then we've got our last two trusty companions who've gone out all the time. We've got Riley. Here is Riley's gear grid. She is going to be taking out the bone axe again. We made another one. She's got, uh, so that'll be Savage. Hopefully she'll do some critting. She's also got um, three-fifths of the of the uh, rawhide vest, so she's going to get one evasion from that. She doesn't have monster grease. I gave it to the other people who don't have any armor. Um, but she now has the ability to activate the rawhide headband, and when she departs, she gets plus one survival. So Riley will have two survival because of Hobble. All our, de well, just, all our departing survivors get it survival whenever they go out now. Um, then we have finally Aurora. Now Aurora, again, she's the one with our plus one permanent strength. She'll be bringing along a founding stone with her, but she's mainly gonna be doing fist and tooth she always does fist and tooth. She's going to be so she's going to want to get that first fist and tooth hit. Uh, she's also got the cat eye circlet this time. So after she gets that hit, just to gain that proficiency, we can start cat eye circling. Maybe we can throw a founding stone if it's necessary. If I actually absolutely must, but this is what Aurora will be wearing. So she'll be part uh, departing, gaining one survival. She had one survival left over, so she'll have two survival. As she goes out. All right. So we will be hunting the flower knight. Now with the flower knight, he starts with two things in play, two traits already in play. He starts with this bloom and the set roots. So the way that um, Bloom works is it's whenever a card will read uh, do Bloom, like whenever an AI card says uh, trigger Bloom or perform Bloom, I forget exactly the, the wording on it. Um, and I don't want to look through the AI cards because I already built a deck. So 
uh, that bloom is a special ability. What it does is it just makes basically makes the survivor disappear and they come back, but they gain a luck um, when they're the ones who are chosen. So it will be chosen randomly, and he has what's called a fairy ring, which is what this set roots is going to be. Um, so whenever there's the whenever there's someone inside the fairy ring, it gives him a plus one damage token. So basically, we want we don't have dash yet which sucks i really wanted dash so you could have moved in dashed or surged to get or no not surge dash to get another move or if i would have had surge at least when i was in there i could have attacked twice to make the most of it because i don't want to be on there but basically what we're going to do is the, the game plan is to run in with aurora try to get as quickly the quick hit as fast as i can on him with the with the um Fist and tooth to gain that proficiency. Then she'll be the only one in there. And then she'll be. Then she'll run out, and then she'll just cat eye circle for the rest of the fight. So she won't be on the ring. The tank. Once I headband with Riley, um, which is what I'll do, to just you know properly set up the AI deck so I can always put the tank wave in a good position. Uh, to never have to go on the fairy ring with wave. To never have to go on the fairy ring with Aurora. Never have to go on there with Riley aside for one time to get her axe proficiency. And to stay on there pretty much the entire time with Caressa. To just attack one round, run in one round, attack, then she'll be stuck there so he'll get the plus one accuracy but at least I'll be targeting the tank. Then she'll attack, start with her the next round, attack, hopefully do some critting, then run off of the, the fairy ring and then run in there with Riley. Have her get her bone proficiency. Have her be the only one on the ring. Next round, do the same thing. Start off with attack, then move, then switch to Aurora. That's the that's the game plan. We're just going to bounce people in and off of this ring the whole time, making sure that we're raw high headbanding, keeping the tank to be the one who's targeted, working with those crits for Caressa pretty much the whole time. We're just going to crit him to death. That's the goal. That's our that's our plan. So now, with all that said, now we just have to hope we can get to him. So we will start the hunt phase, or start the hunt phase. So, unique thing about the flower knight is you don't actually start at the beginning of the board. Um, they start you a little bit. They start you two spaces ahead. So that's where we are right now. We're two spaces up, and overwhelming darkness. We're going to have to go through that. It's actually going to be something different. It's going to be the fairy, or yeah, the fairy gate, forest gate. That's where we'll be when um instead of doing overwhelming darkness so hopefully we'll get through there we'll see what happens now here we go so there's actually i don't think we do any uh there's only going to be one flower night event so hopefully we'll try to get that new event but we've got a lot of just random events to do with the book um Regular old hunt events. So, let me open up the book to the page here. We'll start the hunt. All right, so what we will do is, like I said, because we know we're going to gain the one extra survivor, or survival, when we arrive with the stone noses, we're going to have the tank move right now. So wave will go first. We'll draw this first card. Oh, my. It's the... Uh, so the sword in the stone. <laughs> oh, I didn't want to draw this because it looks rigged, but it's not rigged. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so sword in the stone, that's the new event. Uh, that comes with one of the white boxes. I forget which one it comes in now. Uh, so here we are, the sword of the stone. Cursed with flanking layers of dried where flaking layers of dried blood an obelisk juts from the ground. From its center protrudes a pristine hilt. Nominate a survivor to reach for it. Roll 1d10 and add the survivor's proficiency, sword proficiency to the roll results. So no one has any sword proficiency, so it doesn't matter who we're going to roll. Let's just look at the results here. So we don't want to roll a 1 because we'll be dead. Uh, suffer 2 event damage to the arms location is something that's likely... So, 
arms location. That means we could do it with Riley. She is wearing gloves, so I guess we'll 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 reach for it with Riley. Um, but I would hate for her to die. Also, be really bad for Wave to die. Okay, we're doing it with Riley. So a two. Yep, drag the blade out, but it slams back into the stone. Bone crushing force. Suffer two event damage to the arms hit location. Okay, two event damage to the arms hit location. That sucks, but so Riley's gonna be starting with a light uh, hand location wound. Arms location, I mean. So she'll be starting with a light arms location wound. All right. Now, so we move with Wave. Well, let's just move with Aurora. She'll go next to the next hunt, which is just a random hunt event. Let's roll the random hunt event. So the way you roll hand random hunt events is the white dice represents the tens and then... So we're 93. Now we go to the random hunts, hunt event table. We want number 93. Hey, it's a lost survivor. 93 is a lost survivor. In a hollow between two identical rocks, you find a corpse with fabulous hair clutching a book to its chest. If the settlement has pictographs, the event revealer may read from the book and roll 1d10. Otherwise, the survivors move on, deeply confused. The book tells a tragic tale of two survivors who found a love they could uh, never have. Okay. So we don't have pictographs, so nothing happens. 93. Uh, we find the course with two fab two we find a course with fabulous hair. <laughs> okay. We won't we'll just ignore that. Um, next, so we move with Aurora. We'll go with Riley. To the next one. I already know this is just gonna be a random event because I already drew the only Card that I have. So another random event. 81. 81. All right. Field of arms. Survivors carefully tread the back uh, or tread along the back of a massive sleeping monster. Instead of fur, it has elongated arms. Several of them twitching to whatever dream the great beast is in the mist, midst of. Uh, this, okay. Survivors don't disturb the monster's deep sleep and cross without issue. If any survivor has a sickle, they gingerly remove some tough skin from one of the arms and gain plus one hide basic resource. Okay. Uh, so we just snuck behind a monster, a gigantic monster, and none of us have a sickle. All right, Riley, you will be the one. Now, everyone actually approaches Forest Gate at the same exact time, but let's go. Forest Gate. So we're at the Forest Gate. Uh, the survivors approach an ominous gate. All right. We'll have to test the gate. Um, to do the survivors test the gate. So, let's roll 1d10. When survivors land in the overwhelming dark space, they instead resolve the forest what it wants. The forest wants what it wants. Survivors may not pass over the space and must stop to resolve this event. The survivors test the gate. After rolling to test the gate, each survivor may do any or all of the following actions once to increase the roll result. Okay, here we go. This will be... What are we doing? We'll just do Riley first. A seven for Riley. All right. One, two, uh, the survivors find themselves someplace new and bleak. Inexplicably standing with the gate at their backs. And the hunt. Oh, wait. Do I? Wait. After rolling to test the gate, each survivor may do any or all of the following actions once to increase the roll results. So, wait, yeah, I only roll. 
once. I don't have to do it for everybody. I thought everybody had to roll the gate, so it's different than overwhelming darkness. So you have to roll once. Easy. So it's a seven. So one through seven, uh, we end the hunt and apply the rules of starvation. So we would need to get eight or above. Wait, do you roll for everybody? After rolling to test the gate, each survivor So, we only roll one dice. So 1 through 7 were unwelcome. So I need to do something to increase it to an 8. So 8 through 12, the gates, the gate swings open a fraction. The hinges swing like a forlorn flute, playing a melancholy welcome. The survivors force their way through, each gaining one bleed token. Alright, so everyone's going to gain a bleeding token if we get an 8. So we need to do, someone needs to do something to get a plus one to the result. So we can gain a random disorder, we can gain a bleeding token to add plus one to the result. Who would like to gain two bleeding tokens? Because everyone's going to gain one. Who is going to get hit the least? Probably Aurora is going to get hit the least. So Aurora is going to gain two bleeding tokens, everyone else is going to gain one. Just for passing through everybody gains one. Aurora is going to bump our result to an eight. That allows us to get through. She'll take a second bleeding token, and we are now through the gate. Now, so everyone's here. They're all overwhelming darkness, or they're all at the gate. We've gotten through one more hunt event space, which will be a flower our flower night event. So let's. <laughs> Who do I want to go with? Well, I guess I'll go with Wave, just in case I can spend a survival to avoid something. So Wave goes first. Oh, no, it's another random hunt event. There were no Flower Night hunt events. Are there no Flower Night hunt events? Was that normal? Did I accidentally mess that up? Yes, this was supposed to be a Flower Night hunt event. So, let me just grab the Flower Night hunt event here randomly. That was a mistake. We get the Pool of Secrets. Survivors find a glowing pool of inky black water. Hmm. A shimmering shape swims. Well, let's see, what are we going to do? And the, uh, one survivor may not make themselves investigated. They do roll a table. Let's just read these. Hungry shark teeth suffer the dis... Oh, no. Man, we don't want to roll a one or a two. Swimming scale that sings in the breeze. All survivors gain plus two in sandy. So three or eight. Heal one permanent injury of your choice and gain a random disorder. So we would like a three through an eight because no one really has any insanity, really. I don't even think it's really worth it because I don't want to gain a disorder and I don't want to get a dismembered arm. Uh, we're not even going to investigate this pool. Alright, so that's the end of hunting. Um, now we will start the showdown with the Flower Knight. Here's my quick setup. Here is Riley. She's got all these gears. Here's everything I do to track it. She's got two insanity, one in the body, waist, and head, and she's already got the light arms injury. She has one blood or uh, bleeding token, three survival, and one evasion boon. Here is Wave, who as you can see has got three evasion or three survival, two evasion boons, one from the monster grease. One from having the uh, the affinities completed on the ray, on the rawhide vest, and he's got two at every single hit location, and one insanity, one bleeding token. Here is Aurora, two bleeding tokens, two survival to spend. She has one permanent strength, and she's getting one evasion boon from the monster grease, and she has one waste armor with three insanity. Here is Caressa, she's got no insanity. She's got one evasion boon from Monster Grease, 
That's two luck, uh, one permanent luck, and one boon from the, vi the virus flower. She also has one bleeding token already, and she only has one waste armor. She also has um, only one survival to spend. All right, now let's go right to the showdown. This is the flower ring, the thing I was talking about, that if anybody steps on that, he gets a plus one damage bonus. We also have uh, flower patches that are set up on the board. These allow you to get a plus one luck token and a random flower if you don't roll a one. And we've also got two acanthus plants. They are also good if you don't roll badly. If you don't roll a one or a two. So. All right. The monster will always go first. Let's draw the first card. So the first card is the Venomous Sting. If there are no threats in the Fairy Ring, perform Bloom, which there are no threats in the Fairy Ring right now. So we will perform Bloom. So I will take that. There is Bloom. This is the one where you target a random survivor outside the Fairy Ring. They suddenly vanish, gain plus one luck token, and are doomed until the end of the monster turn. Target emerges from a flower, place them standing in the closest free space inside the fairy ring. Uh, turn the monster to face the target. So that's what will happen. So we perform bloom right now to a random survivor. So, like I said, I take the Sorry, I didn't assign colors. So Riley will be black. Wave will be the pink dice. Um, let's see what other ones do I got? I got black, red. So I need the black. This is the white dice. Sorry, I just can't believe I forgot to do this. So we got black, red, pink, and we will do the blue, our white dice for Carissa. Sorry. Normally, I would have done this earlier. So, let's roll. See who it is. Highest number. 10. That's black. That's Riley. That was a good roll. <laughs> so, Riley is the random survivor who's targeted. That's not that bad. Uh, so, she's the one who's going to vanish. For right now. She will gain a plus one luck token. I'll get put one of my little tokens on her for luck. All right. And that's Bloom. She'll appear at the end of the monster's turn. Now we continue on. Who's the victim of Bloom? All right. Closest threat facing in Fairy Ring. There's no one. Closest threat in Fairy, in fairy Ring. There's no one. Germinate. So, germinate is his basic action, or instinct as it calls it. So here's the instinct. Uh, scatter, scattered pollen flows back to the fairy ring. Place the fairy knight in the center of the showdown board. Remove a plus one luck token from all survivors. So, Riley will lose her plus one luck token. So he's not going to move an attack. Target did not suffer any injuries. Flower Knight draws its stinger. Target gains two bleeding tokens, but there was no target because it germinated. So no one's going to have that happen to them. All right. So that's the first card that gets discarded. Put that back here. No one gains any bleeding. She loses her luck token. Now uh, the target emerges from a flower. Place them standing in the closest free space inside the fairy ring and turn the monster to face the target. <laughs> so I think when they say place them standing in the closest free space in the fairy ring, I think it means that 
where they were standing. So I think it's going to be this close. So it's going to be here. Because she was standing there. Okay. And then they're going to turn to face her. Which will be that way. All right. Now that is officially the end of the monster's turn. All right. Now... So, we could move with Riley, but you know what we'll do? We're going to look, we're going to rawhide headband. So we're going to reveal the top two AI cards and place them in the top of the deck in any order. So we'll reveal the top two. Here are the top two. Um, if there are no threats in the fairy ring, perform bloom twice. So we definitely don't want that to happen, but there will be a threat in the fairy ring because we know we're going to want one there. So, all threats in the no tar... Uh, so it's going to be a speed 2, accuracy 2, damage 1. Speed 2, accuracy 2, damage 1. I think that's going to be the best because this other one's a speed 3. So let's see, what would be the other one? Closest threat facing in fairy ring. So we're going to have someone in the fairy ring. The monster stomps... It's foot and shrieks. Target suffers one brain damage. So how much does Wave have? He only has one brain. So we don't we don't really want him lose his brain thing. That's gonna be a three speed. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. we're gonna want Vein Flourish to go on top. Um, I actually did this wrong. I should have done this after I attacked. Oh, that was dumb. So we're gonna actually put. Uh, Glissade on top. Man, that was stupid. I should have done this at the end of the phase. I don't know why I did that. Oh, because I wanted to move her off of there. Man, that was so dumb. Alright, well, let's move Riley off. Okay, so now, who can get to him? One, two. Carissa could get to him. He's only got a toughness of six. So also Aurora could get to him, but not get off. I guess we'll move with Aurora just for now. Okay, Aurora. She can get to the lines. One, two, three, four, five. But I don't really want her to be targeted. Well, it's best for her to be targeted now while she's still full. So, one, two, three, four, five. We'll target him in the back. So, again, she is using the Fist and Tooth, which is a two-speed accuracy eight, but it's going to hit on sevens. So, that's two hits. Um, that's really good. Let's draw two hit locations. Okay. Here's the two hit locations. Uh, this armor joint is delicate. Minus two toughness to this wound location. Wow, okay. So that means it's going to be a four to hit. She has a plus one strength. She's going to hit on threes on that first one. Are you kidding me? She missed. Are you kidding me? Okay. <sighs> Okay, this one's going to automatically happen. So this is going to be the Flower Knight slowly. The attacker has any stinky gear in their gear grid to gain the priority target token. That's not great that she's going to gain the priority target. She's the one. She, does she have? Yeah, she has monster gear. Uh, grease. Um, all right. Well, so what's she going to wound on in this? A five, right? No. She, yes. Toughness six. Wounding on five. Okay, so that's a wound at least. So she gains the priority target. We did wound. Okay. So this gets discarded. We did one wound. Okay, so priority target. Well, that sucks because now Aurora is going to be targeted. Well, she wounded with her fist and tooth, so I'm going to mark that. She did wound with her fist and tooth, so she gains the... If she lives, she gained the specialty for it. Okay. Now, she's going to gain the priority target. So, do I want anyone else on the table? 
Yeah, that's denoting priority target. Do I want anybody else? I mean, I know she's going to get targeted. And it's going to be the one we drew with the Rawhide headband. So I know it's only going to be a two attack doing only one damage. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to grab this flower. Yep, we're going to grab this flower right now with Carissa. So, flower patches, since it's right behind her. Flower patches. That is a seven. Um, gain plus one luck token and a random flower resource. We will remove this from behind Carissa. We will gain a flower resource. Okay, random flower resource. Okay, and we get the Sighing Bloom. Um, this is good. Sighing Bloom. Okay, Sighing Bloom. Just make note of that because I'm going to put it back in the deck so we could draw it at the end. So, Sighing Bloom. Okay. Now I don't want to stand on anything, so we're just going to wait. He's going to turn, knock her that way. So if I could get to here is where I'm aiming to go. So where would this be? So this would be a one, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, so one, two, three, four, five. So you're going to move to there, because I know he's going to turn around and attack her and then be able to get Carissa into the blind spot. Next, we'll just grab that Acanthus plant. Acanthus plant with wave here. Acanthus plant, wave, a three, find nothing. Good job. That was quick. Find nothing. All right, found nothing. And wave. He will go here as well. All right, that's the end of the survivor's turn. Now we go to the monster's turn. We already know what the monster AI card's going to be because we looked at it, which is this vein flourish. So if there are no threats in the fairy ring, perform bloom twice. There is a threat in the fairy ring. We're not going to be doing that. All threats in the fairy ring. All right, form a separate attack on each target. There's only one, so it's only going to be speed two, accuracy two plus. Now, she has one evasion. Okay, so it's going to be accuracy three plus. That's two hits. The target suffers bash and bleed one. So she's going to gain two bleeding tokens. However, we are probably going to dodge one. So she's only going to gain one token. So we're going to spend one survival to dodge one. So now there's only going to be one hit. We've spent our survival. We're only going to get one bleeding token. Uh, let's resolve to where. Um, actually, before I do that, I made this mistake last time. I'm going to roll both and see which one I'm going to dodge. So the hand and the body. She has no armor either place. So I'm going to dodge the body. Better chance of dying to the body um, when you have to roll severe. So hand. That becomes a light wound on the hand. But it doesn't matter. She's going to get bashed anyway, which is knockdown. Okay, suffers from bash, which is knockdown. I don't think you suffer from the collision. I think you only suffer knockback on collision, not on bash. No, you do not. So she's just knocked down, which is fine. Priority target is gone because she was just attacked. So now she is no longer the priority target. This card gets removed. Okay, now... Um, let me just make sure priority target. I'm almost positive his priority card once is gone once he wounds them. Priority target. When a survivor gains a priority target, uh, only one survivor made the priority target at any time. When a monster picks a target, the survivor with priority target is always target. Yep. It's removed only when the survivor gains. Okay. Yeah, it's at the end of the next monster turn is when it's removed. All right. So that's the end of that. So she now did wound with her fist and tooth. So she can get out of there. 
Um, so that's what we're going to do. Wave is going to spend a survival. First, now since he's spending his survival to do an action, we're going to roll to see if he gains it back on a 6 plus, which is a 5. He does not gain it back, so we'll actually spend the survival. He is encouraging her to get up. Now, um, should Wave move? Well, I forgot to turn him to attack her. That was the whole thing. I wanted those two to be behind him. <laughs> How stupid am I? All right. Um, I think I just did it again. I wanted Wade, I want Wade to go after this is all over. Oh, no, I don't, because I want to dig through the... I want her to use Cat Eye Circlet. All right, yeah, so he's got to do survival now. He's got to do this. He's not going to move. Oh, no, he is going to move, because... We want him to be the target. So he is going to move. So one, two, three, four. He's going to move into the her spot. Yeah. One, two, five. This is close enough. He's still, because they're going to be behind him. They're not going to be threats. He will be a threat because he's in field of view. So he's going to move to there. He'll get two damage. It doesn't matter. I don't mind. Uh, two damage. Now it's Aurora's turn. She's going to move one, two, three, four, five. Back over here because eventually she's going to want to get that Candace plant. But right now, she's going to Cat Eye Circle it. Now, with the Cat Eye Circle, you reveal the next three hit locations and put them back in any order you want. So, one, two, three. Here they are. Uh huh. This, these can be critically wounded. The other one is on a failure. Wound. Flower Knight's eyes beam strangely. Attacker gains plus one courage and is knocked down unless they spend one survival. Okay, so the Fae Breastplate's not bad. That, uh, Carissa has survival to spend. We can do that. So we'll leave that one. What's this one? Uh, oh, this armor joint is delicate. This will be the first one we want. First, for sure. And the third one's on a failure. Uh, no, we want this one, because we're hoping maybe we can do... No, because if we can crit with Carissa, we can remove two wounds. Here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this one here. No, because I don't. No, I can't risk it. Okay, I'm going to put them like this. Top, this will be the bottom. So pick them up like this. Okay. Now it will be Carissa, who's got the plus three luck now. So she's critting on sevens. One, two, three, four, five. Getting behind him. Perfect. She's got the Bone Axe, which is two speed. Okay, we got... She's going to hit on a five plus for accuracy. That is two hits. So we draw two hit locations. Now we know exactly which ones they're going to be. So, first is this, the one with the minus two toughness. So, she has a, the bone axe has strength three. He's got a toughness of six, minus two brings down to four, strength of three. Uh, just needs a one to hit. That's a wound. So, the first one's a wound. Take the top AI card, discard it, that's one wound. Second one uh, is not the minus two toughness. So the second one is six toughness. Three strength is a three plus to hit. Critting on sevens, three plus to hit. That's a crit. So Bone Axe is Savage is going to do two damage. This does not, the reflex does not happen because it was on a failure. So that's going to do two wounds. Put this back, two wounds. One, two. Now, man, I wish I had surge with Carissa, but oh well. Okay, now, uh, Riley, should we headband now to look at those two AI cards? Yes, we shall. Riley is going to spend her action to headband. She's also. Uh, so Carissa hit with the axe. Riley needs to hit with this axe so she can get her proficiency. 
So we want to put her in a position to do so. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. We want to get her here. So she's going to move. Now she's going to headband. All right, we're going to draw the two top two AI cards and place them back in any order. Ooh, it's a mood. Probably want him to just draw a mood so he doesn't do anything. Or no, he's going to draw the mood, then he's going to draw the card anyway. But a mood would get it out of the deck, making him easier to kill. Uh, so let's see. The eyes in the flower night helm glow intensely, bringing stinging tears as Savara's face. All Savara's minus three accuracy while they're in the flower night's facing. I'm never going to plan on being in his facing. Um, so if he gets a bruised ego, you discard this. I kind of want him to just draw that to get it out of the deck so I kill him faster. Uh, I would like to do. I think. I think I'm gonna have him just draw this stupid mood. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna be in front of him. I would never want to stand in front of him and try to wound. Uh, it doesn't really seem to do anything else. So I think I'm just gonna have him draw this mood just to get it out of there. Closest survivor outside fairy ring in range is gonna be his next thing. Closest survivor outside of fairy ring. Hmm. Did I just accidentally move her closest survivor? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. I did. So instead of moving her here, uh, I'm gonna one, two, or she, he's gonna go all the way over there. Oh wait, but I really don't want Aurora to get attacked again. <sighs> now Riley has one evasion. It's the same amount as Carissa, I just didn't put the... Alright, that's what I'm doing. So... He's gonna draw this. So I'm putting the stupid mood on top. I'm just gonna make him draw this. Just to put it in play. And she's staying right where she is, even though she's gonna get grabbed. Alright. Here we go. He's going to draw this. He's going to put this mood into play. Mood, as we already know, does nothing really. Makes it minus three accuracy if you fight him face on. Mood stays in play until Bruised Ego is drawn. Next, he's going to draw another card. Basically, I'm hoping he just wounded himself with that. Now he's going to draw this card. So we already know what's exactly going to happen. He's going to move here. One, two, he's going to move over to here. I targeted Riley with myself. She gains a insanity. That puts her at three insanity. Uh, collision now for a wave is going to. Hmm. Knock down. He's going to be knocked down here, which is fine because he's going to stand at the end of the next monster turn. He wasn't going to do anything anyway. How much wounds does he have left? He's going to have one. He's got three, four, five. He's only got six health left. It's possible that uh, Carissa could just outright kill him next turn. All right, so that's fine. Now let's do this stupid attack. It's going to be two speed, hitting on a four, hitting on five. Hitting on five pluses. So this is actually great. It's only a two speed hitting on five plus. One of the um, one of them was a miss anyway. So this is a miss because Riley has the plus one evasion for the rawhide vest. That's a hit. It's gonna do three damage. Uh, I'll roll to see where it goes. No, you know what? I'm not even gonna roll because I'm gonna dodge it. Riley's just dodging. Because it's going to suffer bash and grab her. I don't really want that to happen. So I'm just outright dodging the second one, the only one that hit. All right. Um, that's it. That couldn't have went better. All right. What am I doing? So let's go. Uh, let's just go with... No, she's going to get minus three accuracy if I attack from there. But I could attack from the side now, because he brought himself all the way to the edge. I do need to hit with the axe, because if Carissa kills him in one hit, I don't want that to happen. Then she'll get no weapon proficiency. So Riley's going to move to here. 
So she's out of the facing. She's not going to suffer from the stupid mood. So she's going to just outright attack with her bone axe. Two speed, accuracy six plus. It's two misses. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, Riley, do you want to spend a survival to get Wave to stand? We'll see what happens. Okay. Go in here. Let's attack in the back with the bone axe from Carissa. Two speed, hitting on a six, hitting on five pluses. That is two hits. Let me draw the top of the hit location. Both of these are going to be wound reactions. So one has a critical wound. She's critting on a 7 plus. Let's just roll that one. Or does any of these result in knockdown? Okay, the Flower Knight, I beam strangely, plus one courage. And is knocked down unless they spend one survival. Carissa, do you have survival spend? You do. Whatever. 7 plus. That is a crit. Um, so the critical, oh man, I didn't read, I should have read the critical, because uh, what if it knocks him, to, uh, knocks him away or something? Critical wound, the sight of the elaborate armor in ruins is gratifying. If the flower knight is inside the fairy ring, it gains minus one toughness token, and attacker gains plus one, plus one luck token and a random flower resource. Whew. Whew. For a second I thought that might have been a bad thing, like I could have knocked him away or something. I should have read the critical first. Okay. So she gains another plus one luck token. This is insane. So she's got four luck now. She's going to be luck on, or critting on a six on the next one. Uh, this is insane. Okay. So that's critical. We do two damage with that. She's now got plus four luck. I get a random flower resource and he gets a minus one. So he's got a minus one toughness token. And I get a flower resource. So last time we got the Sighing Bloom. This time, oh, do it over this camera. I don't want to do it right there. Oh, I guess that one. OCS Bloom. Damn it. I'm really bad at shuffling cards. I keep dropping the OCS Bloom. Um, OCS Bloom. We'll write that down. So I got the Sighing Bloom and the OSIS Bloom. OSIS. Or OCS. So we got Sighing and the Osseus, so we'll put that one back. Okay. Um, so that was the crit. She got the plus one luck token. He got the minus one toughness. So we discard that. Now for her second hit, this also has a wound reaction. Now she's critting on a six plus. He's got a minus one toughness, brings it down to five. This is strength three. She's got a wound on a two. So that's a wound. So three wounds is what was done. One, two, three in total, because the, the crit did an extra. She's did two. Discard that. That's three AI cards discarded. Now what happens with the wound? If attacker is adjacent to the flower knight, they suffer bash. Of course they are. Um, well, now I guess they could have a ranged weapon. Without turning, move the flower knight three spaces towards the center of the showdown board. <sighs> okay, so he's going to collide with her. Uh, they're going to suffer Bash. So Bash is going to do one damage and result in knockdown. So she's going to take one damage to the body and result in knockdown. Now wait, the, the, uh, where's that wound? Okay, so the wound, the bash was from the re reflex. Okay, now he's gonna move three spaces. So the wound, so that was to the body. Carissa gets hit in the body. That's gonna be a light body. So she's knocked down. She's triple knocked down. She's knocked down from the bash. And then he's gonna back up three spaces. One, two, uh, wait, one, two, three, which is just gonna get himself to here without turning. So, okay, yeah, so he bagged, he kind of moonwalked side diagonally. Okay, 
so he would have moved here and then up one. So she's been collided and knocked down here. Okay. And suffered one wound to the body from a bash. All right. Now, Carissa has gone. Riley has gone. Aurora has already hit with Fist and Tooth, but he's only got four hits left. Um, should, I lo should I look at the... Oh, I need to reshuffle these AI cards. Should I look at the AI cards? Aurora has the, the hit location deck. I can do that next turn. Oh, she does, uh, Aurora does, has no choice. So Aurora could encourage. Should I encourage Wave to get up? It's probably likely that I would rather him target Wave now. So I'm just going to encourage. Just going to encourage with Aurora. She's going to spend one survival. Oh, that was the other reason. I just remembered now why. With the shattered jaw, you can't encourage people. Um, that's why my our wit has basically broke uh, busted. He can't ever come out again. Okay, so making him stand. Now it actually is his turn. Now, with Wave, I guess I'll just move closer. Well, he'll be in field of view. I could get... I could get here. Mm, might as well attack, right? Three speed. Draw the trap if I could. Do I want to dig through there, though? I mean, he's going to get attacked anyway. Why get attacked twice, right? Why trigger the trap now when I could look and maybe just cause savage wounds? Because she's going to be critting on a four. Or uh, She has plus four luck, so she'll be critting on a six. Why bother triggering the trap, right? Yeah, why bother triggering the trap? Let's go. Let's just be done. We'll just, if I had a shield, I would block. But we'll be done. All right, drawing the AI card. Oh, wait, I, sh I need to look. I didn't see. None of these cause bruise equal, right? None of these hit locations caused a bruised ego. Oh, he would have had minus three accuracy attacking from the front anyway. Yeah, that would have been a terrible idea. I would have forgot all about it. It would have been... So, yeah, it would have been a terrible idea. If there are no threats in the fairy ring, perform bloom. There are threats in the fairy ring. I made him stand. Closest threat facing in fairy ring. So I knew I'd need to move him to the facing. And also because I didn't want him to trample. Okay. Three speed. Oh, three speed. Ooh, that sucks. Oh, three speed. Accuracy. Actually, he's going to be hitting out a four, but the three, and he's going to be doing two damage because there's two people in the fairy ring. Hitting out fours. That is three hits. That was an eight. It's three hits. Oh, man. Okay, well, he's going to be doing two, two, well, he's got two armor everywhere, so this isn't too bad. Let's just not get multiple hit locations. Body, body, foot. Okay. Body, body, foot. Now, what happens if the target did not suffer any injuries, light, heavy, or severe? Flower Knight draws its stinger. Gains two bleeding tokens. That would put him at three. Ooh. Do I want him to just forcefully take a light into the body? That seems reckless. Am I reckless? Am I going to be reckless? He's got four hits left. That seems reckless to just take... The hit to the body just to not worry about bleed tokens. Oh, that's so reckless. Should I be so bold and reckless? <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going to be so bold and reckless. No, he'll be not. No, should I do that? I'm doing it. That is, that is insane. I'm in, am I insane for doing this? That's going to cause a heavy because he's only got two body. That'll cause a heavy. He'll be knocked down. Am I insane? Am I insane to do that? Can I kill him? I think I can kill him. Can I kill him?
All right, I'm doing it. I'm insane. All right, I'm going to take four damage to the body. That's going to give him... He's going to be knocked down now, and he's taking a heavy injury. And then two damage to the feet, but he had two from the complete rawhide set. All right, I might be insane. That might be stupid. So he's knocked down from this. I might... That might have been the dumbest thing I've ever done. We will see. Because he's going to draw that again. Because I'm probably, it's very likely I'm going to do two damage. But it's also very likely I'm going to do four damage. It's very likely I'm going to do four damage. Am I insane? No, I'm insane. I can't, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get, he's going to take, forcefully take the heavy. All right, now I have to, now she stands up because she was knocked down during her own turn on a reflex. So this is the end of the next monster's turn. All right. She's likely going to kill him, so I need to try to hit with an axe. And he's got this stupid minus three accuracy. So one, two, three, four. Come on, Riley. Just hit. Hit with your axe. Come on. Two speed. Hitting on six plus. That's two hits. Got a wound. Just got a wound, Riley. That's all you gotta do. Just got a wound. Oh man, this stupid... I forget, do these things have first strike? No, they don't have first strike. Okay, the f All monsters, all survivors in the facing. Okay, so that's gonna suck. He's gonna call, that's gonna knock Wave down to no insanity. Let's just roll and see what happens. Uh, he's got minus one toughness now, so he was six toughness, now he's a five toughness. This is a three strength. She's wounding on twos, it's very likely to happen. That's a seven, that's a wound. Now all on the facing suffer one brain damage. So he's down to zero insanity. This might have been a mistake. This might have been a mistake to let him take that heavy. Okay, so this was a wound, that's one. He's got three hits left. Okay. Um, now we got this second one here. Does this this doesn't have first strike. Okay, so this must be a critical, or else it fails. Or oh, well, Riley got. I need to mark the axe. She got her axe proficiency. She just wounded. All right. Okay. Um, so unless this is a critical. She has no chance of getting a crit. Well, I mean, she does have a chance. 10% chance. That's, okay, failure. Uh, turn the Flower Knight to face the attacker. They gain plus two insanity. That's it? That's it? Thank you. That's it? Okay, thank you. Needed insanity. It's so early in the game. Okay. She gains two insanity. She's got five now. Awesome. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay. We're just moving. One, two, three, four, five. Getting in the back here with your. Uh, come on, Caressa. You got two speed. Hitting on five plus. That's only a one hit. Oh, oh, it's another parry, but at least she crits on sixes. That's a critical. Okay, so the, uh, so the wound, uh, wound attempts on this card fail unless the wound result is critical. It is critical. If the attacker does not have fencing secret fighting art, breakthrough. Okay, what is breakthrough? Breakthrough, breakthrough. Breakthrough. With a ferocious blow, the survivor is able to overcome the Flower Knight's bird-like reflexes. The settlement has innovated drums. The rhythm of battle is maddening. Seizing the moment, the attacker attempts to break through. Okay. Uh, so let me just see if there's anything. Looks like it's just a way of getting... Okay, so I'm going to resolve these hits. 
It's savage. It was a critical, so we're doing two wounds. He's down to just his basic action. All right, down to just his basic action now. Now let's do breakthrough. Breakthrough. Wish I would have done drums. I had the option last time. Oh, come on. That was a three. Binds twist and coil around your torso, pulling you away. If you are inside the fairy ring, you are placed knocked down on the nearest free space outside of it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gain one luck token. Okay, you're knocked down on the nearest, nearest space outside of it. One, two, three, four, five. Or one, two, three. Yeah, this is the nearest space outside of it. Knocked down outside of it, nearest space. You gain a luck token. You crit on fives now. So, whatever. Thank you, I guess. It's a lot of tokens. Uh, you crit on fives now. Okay. And you lowered the damage of yourself by pushing me outside the fairy ring. I question your logic, knight. I question your logic. Uh, now it's Aurora's turn. Oh no, she already went. Even if she didn't go, it doesn't matter. No, she went, yeah. She spent a thing to encourage him. Basic action. Alright, basic action. If there are no threats in the fairy ring, perform bloom. There are threats in the fairy ring. It's Riley. Closest threat facing in fairy ring. Okay, three speed. Hitting on two. Accuracy two. Or damage two. Basic action is actually pretty rough. Might I be insane? I might be insane for letting him wound what's his name. Okay, closest threat facing in fair three speed. Oh, that was not a roll. That was a drop. Three speed, accuracy. Riley has one accurate one evasion. So accuracy three plus. And of course it's three hits. Okay, of course it's three hits. Damage two per hit. Okay, let's roll these two per hit. Uh, waste. We're taking that one. That's going to give her a light wound, so we're taking the waste. Taking the body. That's also only going to give her a light wound. Dodge in the hand. That would have been a severe injury. Dodge in the hand. Taking those two. So she's down to a light on the body and a light on the waist. Um... Blip, blip. Light on the body, light on the waist. She's not even knocked down. All right. All right. I mean, basic action is what you're going to be doing, buddy, the entire time, if you even survive this round. And that's a big if. You stand up now because you were knocked down last turn, or last monster turn. End of the next one, you stand up. What are we doing here? What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Should I just encourage Carissa? I see no reason to not just encourage Carissa because if I get into one of those hypnotic deflections, I can only wound on a crit. She crits on five, so. Uh, wave? Let's go, wave. It's your turn. You're going to encourage. Let's see if you get your Savaro back. A seven. Uh, six plus, right? Yeah. So, so you don't spend survival. So you just encouraged Carissa to get up. Now Carissa will move. One, two, three, four, five. She's going to get behind him. She's going to attack with... Oh, why am I grabbing D6s? She's going to attack with the Bone Axe, which is a two speed. Accuracy hitting on a five because I'm in the blind spot. That's a one hit. It's pretty much think all I pretty much need. At this point. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This is impervious. Did I just... Oh, no, wait. It's only super dense locations. Whew! I thought I just broke my stupid axe. Uh, okay. On a critical wound, on a 5+, plus, it's the only... 7, that's a crit. So that, that's gonna kill him, but... Attacker gains priority target, doesn't matter. The thing's dead. Plus one luck token, doesn't matter. So, it's me from the future, I'm going back. We're, fine. We're fixing this mistake that I found in editing. Remember how I said that this doesn't matter, it would kill him anyway? That's wrong. Impervious should not wound at all, even on a crit. Nothing will wound that. For some reason, when I was playing this 
uh, I was confusing it with just his norm with one of these parry moves that he's got, where you can only crit, where it's only a wound. On this, for some reason, I just had these in my head, where you can only wound them if you crit, instead of impervious, which can never be wounded at all, even if you do crit. The crits will still do something, uh, but they don't cause a wound. So, I don't know, I was just worried about the super dense, I don't know what was going on, that was dumb. So we're gonna fix it. That was just dumb by me. So this, she did crit, right? So that does bring this uh, card. So what we're gonna do, it, it's gonna put her, the mood that was, he was active, it's gonna put it back on top of the AI deck, giving him one mood, or one AI card, which is the mood. Now, I. Through the editing process, I pulled out all the wounds that we got here, that we've done, including this one. So this one will go on top of the wound deck. So these will be the discard pile. I had to recreate it. Now, uh, this hit location deck, I'm going to have to shuffle it, because I don't know which ones are left, and I don't know the order they were in, because I never looked at them. So the trap is still in here somewhere, and I don't know where it is. Now, so he's got two wounds left right now. But no one else has gone, technically, no one else has gone. Uh, because I also noticed in editing, she would have stood up anyway. So there was no need for Wave to encourage her. So, we're just going to say he didn't have to waste his survival. He rolled for, we rolled for it, we got it back anyway, so he's still a two survival. Now I've reset everybody back to everything that they were at, because I was watching, as it, I noticed this as I was editing, so I was quickly able to put everything back. Um, I'm not going to show you on camera because I've already written down the things from the settlement event so I don't want to spoil it. Um, so we're gonna f play this through now. Um, so Wave doesn't need to go. So now that this is returned we know what the AI card is. No one else had gone because all we had done was encourage her to stand up she crit it. She does gain an additional plus one luck to it, token so she's now critting on fours. Uh, Carissa's critting on fours. All we need to do is get him to draw this one more time and then attack him. That'd be the best option because right now it's on the best. It's on top. So unless uh, Riley were to crit, because uh, the, the I could attack with her, but I don't want to do. Well, we'll see. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna can I circle it with Aurora, just right now. She hasn't. She hadn't gone yet. We're going to do the next three monster locations. One, two, three. All right. Here they are. None of them are the are the trap, but two of them are this parry crap. Um, attackers adjacent to the Flower Knight. They're viciously kicked away. The attack suffers bash and knockback five. Now, Riley hasn't really been hurt. Oh, no. Wait, she has been hurt quite a bit. She's, she's on light everything. Except for her. So we don't even really want to do anything. Plus these other ones only are going to hit on a crit on a, on a thing. So th this, we're going to put this back like this. Uh, let's read these other failures quickly. This is going to be the first one, just because um, we don't want to trigger breakthrough or do any of that. We don't want to risk not being able to do something. And we don't want him to move. So this one's the worst for sure, because we don't want him to move. Has moved the monster three spaces towards the center of the board. He's not entirely at the center of the board yet. Now he's going to do basic action for sure because what we're probably going to do is just end our turn here. So we're going to put this on the bottom, the one where he moves. So this will be the bottom, this will be the next one, and this will be the top. So that's how we're putting those back now. Now his basic action, so now she's gone with her thing. She can't surge to pick up, you know, this is so dumb because I left this here for so long. A smart person <laughs> would have, before attacking with her, would have picked this up. But whatever, I didn't pick it up yet again. So basic action, because um, he's going to draw this mood, and then he's going to trigger his basic action. So his basic action is just going to be a speed 3 with an accuracy 2. So we're just going to get Riley just off. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. She's going to go here. He's off, he's off. She has to stay because she's already moved. Uh, closest threat 
facing in the fairy ring. This we're gonna move Wave into the now. He's got a heavy body. We're moving him right there. He's got the heavy body. It's gonna be three speed, two accuracy, doing two damage per hit. Hopefully it won't kill him. So that's it. He's gonna move there. He's gonna pass. I wish I had a shield. She already went. He, she's gonna cat eye circle it. She just moved off to fairy ring to lower his damage. Now he's gonna draw this stupid mood card again, entrancing mood. Just gonna put the minus three accuracy everywhere. It's gonna he's, that's gonna go into effect there. Okay. Um, this withering floor actually stays in effect. This is a weird one. Um, because it says if it's a bruised ego, I don't know. Bruised ego stays in play and it affects this entrancing gauge, right? I don't know. It's just weird. So, this should always cause this to be discarded, but it's the last card in the AI deck. So, it just keep getting discarded. Uh, and put it in some kind of loop where it keeps drawing itself and discarding itself. So that's stupid. We're not going to do that. We're just going to say, oh, this can't be in effect, so we'll just put it in the discard pile. Now we go to draw something that's nothing else, so we basic action. Instead of reshuffling the AI. So this is just going to... I don't know. It's dumb. So, now he's going to do basic action, which again, here it is. Three speed, two accuracy. It's going to be two damage because there's two people on the fairy ring. Okay, three speed, two accuracy. Now, Wave has uh, two evasion, correct? Yeah, Wave has two evasion. So, he's going to be hitting on a four plus. Uh, that's only two hits. This third one was a three. So, two hits. We'll just roll damage here, and I have to dodge bodies. And watch me probably roll two bodies. I mean, I know that's what's going to happen. Well, okay, so I did roll a body. Got to spend our survival. If he had two left, we're spending that survival. Dodging the body, obviously. Taking two to the hands, that just... That he has two armor left in the hands. Alright. That's basic action. Now it's back to survivor's turn. Um, we already can't I circle it in. So what we're going to do is... Um, now this is a risk here because I want to kill him, but like I said, a smart person would grab this now. But because I've already done the settlement phase, I want to just keep it to what was already happened in the settlement phase. I don't want to have to re-record everything, and I don't want to cheat and gain another uh, Acanthus plant if I were to grab one. Um, or should I just grab it now and say we're never going to... I mean, we would never spend it in, in the survival anyway. We'd save it to like to cook. Um... Yeah, maybe I should retroactively grab this. No, because if I miss here, I want to cat eye circle because I know the damn the trap is going to be close. Um, I know it's got to be right there because there's only like seven cards in the deck that were left. All right, uh, I'm gonna attack in the back. Hopefully, we just crit and kill him. Uh, so, come on, Caressa, you have two speed for the bone axe. Hitting on five pluses. That's two hits. Now we know exactly what they were. That's great. This is going to be two hits. The first one is going to react on a wound. So... Should I even do... You know what? Now that I think about it... Well, what are, she's 60% of the time she's going to crit and just kill him. I was going to give her a knockback if he misses. Oh man, I don't want to. I really don't want to get knocked back. Uh, perform basic action. How are you looking? She couldn't be able to dodge if I rolled a body. <sighs> so I wouldn't have to perform breakthrough because it would just. Oh no! I, you know what? I'm just gonna do here. I'm just gonna right now. Uh, so he's still only got five toughness, so it's wounding on a two, critting on a four. Let's just crit and be done with it. That's a four. Crit it and be, be done with it. Now we did crit him this time, and Savage is going to trigger two wounds. That's going to remove the AI card. I already put it here, so remove the AI card. And then we kill him through the basic action. Now he's dead. 
All right, so we corrected this, this rule mistake. Now we move on to the settlement phase. Um, all right, so that was me from the future correcting that mistake. Now return you to past me who killed him in an incorrect manner and we'll do that settlement phase. We have killed him. Now you get four, I'm pretty sure, I'm just gonna make sure. Four basic and four, uh, well I'll read the ending for beating him, okay. When the Spirals beat the Flower Knight, they gain the Flower Knight badge, rare gear. Add Petal Spiral invitation. I already pulled that out. Here's Petal Spiral. We're adding this to the innovation deck. There's Petal Spiral. It's a Forbidden Dance consequence, but I don't have Forbidden Dance, but it says I add it anyway. If any survivor has the fencing, secret fighting art, and the ghastly beauty disorder, they gain the narcissistic disorder and plus one permanent evasion. I don't have either of those. Next summon phase, we have to sense memory. So we'll be doing that right away. Sense memory, add that to our third thing here. So sense memory. All right, we are now sensing memory. All right. Now, let's do the plus one hunt experience. I already did the, let's do a hunt experience for everybody. Anybody age up? Carissa? No, Carissa's just level one, first hunt experience. Aurora's third hunt experience. Waves first, Riley's third. So no one's gonna age up or anything. Okay, we've done all of that. Now we are doing four basic and four Four flower. Four basic and four flower. So this gets added to our innovation deck. Right there. Okay. Four of these. One, Osseus Bloom. Two, Warbling Bloom. Sighing Bloom. Oh yeah, these, never mind, these are behind there. And... Another warbling. Okay, that's the four flower resources. Actually, so it's two of these, two of these. So it's two Osseus Bloom, two Sign Bloom, two Warbling Bloom. And now basic, basic. Four of these. All right, four of these. One, Love Juice. Monster Bone, Love Juice, and then Monster Hide. It's a lot of Love Juice. I didn't... Ugh. That's a sentence. Um, Alright, that's the end of the showdown phase. So we will set up now for the settlement phase. We're set up for a settlement event. Um, I forgot as I killed him, there's the Flower Knight badge that we draw. Uh, that allows us to draw tactics cards. At the start of the showdown, you draw one tactics card and gain plus one evasion token. Tactics cards are really good. Um, I can explain those next time when we use them, but for right now, the important thing to know is that's going to give a plus one evasion. So that will go right on the tank. Whoever it happens to be, we're not through the settlement event yet. Someone could die, so... But that makes our tank look like this. Really good. Plus one evasion token permanently for the tank. All right. Next, we draw a settlement event card. So, shuffle these up. And then we draw, or we roll a dice, a seven. Seventh card. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seventh card. Lights in the sky. A spectacular light show erupts against the limitless darkness above. Swirling wind trails 
streak overhead. They lift everyone's spirits. The settlement's collective imagination is set aflame. After rolling for any endeavor, you may add one plus one or plus two as a result. Huh. That's good. So we get a plus one or plus two to all results. Um, okay, once per summon phase. We can gain a whole bunch, so we can do graves, gain a whole bunch of stuff. Face, uh, we have graves, but we don't have any of those other things. So, maybe we'll do graves. We'll see, we'll leave that out there for now. All right, we'll put those there. All right, now we also do sense memory, since that was added, and we'll do sense memory. Let me mark, because this is the third year, so we're marking this off. All right, sense memory. Rushing into the settlement, the returning survivors desperately attempt to convey to the others powerful memories that dwelt in the very air of the glade. Even as they pass the settlement's thresholds, the memories fade, and the delicate blooms clutched in their hands wilt. The settlement may pour their inspiration into inspired crafting. All right, so we get to do some crafting. <laughs> so, let's do this inspired crafting right away. So, for one Osseus Bloom, which we have here, one Sign Bloom, which we have here, one Organ, so this Sign Bloom also counts as an Organ, and one Hide, which the Warbling Bloom also counts as a Hide. So for these four resources, we will go ahead and craft the Vespertine Bow, which is awesome. This is a ranged bow, two-handed. It's three speed, accuracy six plus, six strength. It's also deadly, meaning it's a plus one luck, just like Fist and Tooth. Fist and Tooth is also deadly. Uh, it's got a range five. For each attack, you may choose for Vespertine Bow to have slow, which is a plus four accuracy, or range nine for that attack. So, um, this is also not cumbersome. So you can move and shoot. This is a crazy bow. This is going to go right on Caressa, the person who had the plus one permanent luck. So she's going to go ahead and gain this. Now, she was using the bone axe for the savage last time. But we're going to go ahead and take that off of her. She will now use this bow. So she will definitely be gaining bow proficiency. We will hope to do that right away. So her gear grid now has, she has plus one permanent luck, makes her hit on a nine. Vespertine bow's deadly, or makes a crit on a nine. Vespertine bow is deadly, makes a crit on an eight. She carries a sleeping virus flower, which is plus one luck, makes a crit on a seven. And then also we will spend one love juice, which counts as an organ, to create a lucky charm. So Lucky Charm is when you have two blue affinities, you will have plus one luck. So we'll go ahead and craft one of those. That will cost us our organ. So all these resources are spent. This is spent. Now we will craft this Lucky Charm. We'll give that to Carissa as well, making her gear grid look like this. So she will have two complete blue affinities, giving her yet another plus one luck. So she will have plus one permanent luck. That's a nine and a ten. Deadly, eight and a ten. 8, 8 through 10, plus 1 luck from the virus flower, 7 through 10, plus 1 luck from the charm, 6 through 10. She is critting on a 6 through 10 with a ranged weapon. All right. Good job, Carissa. Um, now, let's see, now we will spend one of our endeavors to uh, do innovation, which will do the warbling bloom, which counts as a hide, do another Osea's Bloom, which counts as a bone, and the other love juice, which counts as an organ. Now we will do our innovation, which is our innovation deck here. We draw two. Oh, two, Family huh. and bed. Oh, are you kidding me? These stupid hovel innovations. I should have just done the Gorm. Like I should have just I should have just done Gorm just to add these. Alright, let's go. 
family and bed. All right, uh, family first. Departing survivors gain plus one survival. Pretty good. Survivors nominated for intimacy may give themselves a surname if they didn't already have one. A newborn survivor inherits the surname of the parent. Their weapon type in half of their weapon proficiency levels. Great for later in the game. Not so great right now. Um, we will not be taking that. Bad is also just not good. <laughs> I mean, plus one survival limit is good. Uh, so I guess bad because I'd rather have four survival limits. So whatever. Uh, uh, should I just take family? What do you... Are there any family consequences? Let me just search real quick through the... Oh, I think I think Clan of Death is a family consequence. Uh, what's a bad consequence? I don't think there are bad consequences. Ooh, Clan of Death is a family consequence. I see no... Um, bad consequences. So, whatever. We're going to take family just to get Clan of Death. Clan of Death would help. Okay, we're taking family. Putting bad back in the innovation deck. Uh, let me quick... So, family innovations will be added. Um, so, Departing Survivors gain plus one survival. We'll mark that. We now have two Departing Survival. It's good. And we can do, well, we can do a surname. Uh, they gain half that proficiency rounded down. Well, okay, okay. Eh, eh. Eh, we were going to do augury for the rest of our turn anyway, because I was going to save the bone and the hide. Because uh, I think, I mean, you guys can leave comments. Anybody who's watching this, even if you only watch just this episode, you can leave a comment about what to hunt. But I think um, we're going to probably hunt a lion and maybe make a spear. Uh, yeah, and then maybe one more lion before the butcher. So I think I'm just going to save the hide and the bone to innovate and then use up as much of the lion stuff as I can. Uh, oh, and when we crafted that bow, I had to add mistletoe four years down the line. So mistletoe was added to year seven. Uh, whatever that mistletoe event is, we'll do it in year seven. I already wrote it down. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to hunt the lion next. Just... I can't think of anything else really to do besides augury. So here we go. We're going to augur it up. Uh, who's going to augur? Or... Um... Mm -hmm. Well, a person who does augury doesn't necessarily have to be the... But you gain understanding, right? Uh, yeah, they gain understanding or survival. Who could use from understanding? It's Riley and Aurora. I, I mean, so Riley going to do it first. A five. Oh, we can add plus two. What do we need for intimacy? Eight plus. Okay. So a five gain, it doesn't even matter. I mean, it is one, one survival. Riley, you gained yourself one survival. I mean, it doesn't matter. You're two survival now, but we were going to get our survival limit still only three, so whatever. Two survival you're at now. That costs one. Let's go. Uh, Aurora doesn't have any, right? Aurora doesn't have any survival. Let's do Aurora. That is. Oh, why am I rolling on here? Well, it was just a three. Uh, one to three, lose a resource to gain one understanding. Uh, should I lose a bone? I guess, yeah, whatever, what the hell, right? Ditch the bone. Well, I'm gonna get a lot of hide from the cat. Let's, uh, let's ditch the bone, I guess. Yeah, we'll ditch the bone. To get um, to get the one understanding, whatever, right? So Aurora can gain one more understanding. That'll be good for her. 
one more understanding. Um, cost one more survival. Let's just do our last survival. Uh, I think the camera battery just died. So let's do our last survival. It was a nine, so we're going to do intimacy. Um, all right, intimacy event. Let's just do that. Uh, Riley and Miles. Yep, how about that? Riley and Miles. They will be the parents. Uh, Riley, your name is going to be Riley X. Um. <laughs> Riley axe him because because you have an axe <laughs> all right Riley let's see what let's roll on the let's roll on the intimacy table a five the child of Riley and Miles which will be named axe whatever something axe so they will start with one axe proficiency um, nice. It's actually good. One axe proficiency. Maybe they'll come out next hunt. Maybe they'll be, because I got an extra axe laying around now that I got the Vespertine bow. Maybe I'll switch, put the tank, whoever goes out next time to tank, I'll just take the axe with them and they can, yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, because the next turn it's going to be wave coming. Wave. Aurora, Riley, and Cassia to hunt the lion. All right, that's what we'll be doing. As far as I can tell, we'll be playing on hunting a lion. All right, we'll see you in the next lantern year.